Are you struggling with having the money for your first house flip? You're not alone. In fact, it's the most common concern we hear. The good news is that there's plenty of money available for good deals. But in order to get access to those funds, you need to know what I'm about to share with you. You're gonna discover the three most common ways to get funding for house flips. And at the end, I'll reveal the best way to fund flips. It's a strategy that our apprentices use to get money even for marginal deals. For many beginners, funding is the single most important lesson you could learn on the subject of flipping houses. Hi, I'm Brian Bush with Freedom Mentor. And for nearly 20 years, our organization has coached and mentored many of America's most successful house flippers. We've been a part of thousands of deals and funded many of our apprentices' deals along the way. We have a tremendous amount of real world experience with helping people find money for flips. And I'm gonna share some of that wisdom with you today. If you have any questions as we get into these details, text FREEDOM to 305-315-8030 or comment below. So how do you find the money to do your first house flip? First, let's look at the three most common ways to get funding. And then again at the end, I'll describe the best way to fund house flips. The vast majority of house flips that take place across America are funded with hard money loans. There are literally thousands of hard money lenders with billions of dollars waiting to lend to house flippers. We developed a free hard money locator tool that you can use to find lenders, but you can also use Google to search for them. They're not hard to find. Hard money loans were developed specifically for house flipping, whereby the loan is based on the deal, not necessarily the borrower. And hard money lenders typically lend 80 to 90% of the purchase price, plus they'll typically provide the money for the renovation costs too. At Freedom Mentor, we're a hard money lender for our apprentices, and we sometimes lend 100% of the purchase price if the deal is really good. For more details on hard money loans, check out our video, In-Depth Look at Hard Money Loans. So you may be asking if there are thousands of hard money lenders with billions waiting to lend, how come everyone isn't flipping houses with hard money loans? Because it requires a good deal. Your purchase price needs to be well below the as-is market value, not only to satisfy the requirements of the hard money lender, but also because the interest rates can be 12% or more. So the overall funding costs are significant. Hard money is expensive money, so you need plenty of room in the deal to pay for it and still turn a good profit. As we've covered on other videos, finding a good deal can be hard. It's one of the many reasons why people come to us to be mentored, to learn how to find the best deals, even in a highly competitive marketplace. And most importantly, to learn how to recognize that a deal is actually a good one. Here's an example of a house flip funded with hard money. Scott, one of our apprentices from the Southeast, applying our proprietary motivated seller marketing techniques, negotiated an 80,000 purchase price for a property that had an as-is value of 120. By the way, this happened last month, so it's actually still in process. As you know from our other trainings, Scott could have very easily sold this property before having to close. But since it only needed cosmetic updates to then sell for around 150, Scott wanted to close on it. He could have chosen any hard money lender, including Freedom Mentor Funding but he chose a national hard money lender because they offered him an unbeatable interest rate below 10%. He put 10% down, plus some closing costs. He was about 12,000 out of pocket at closing. Now he's additionally going to be putting in 15,000 to renovations but he's again able to resell it at 150,000. So for every dollar he's putting in, he's getting $2 out. That's a pretty good return. He's in the cosmetic renovation phases as we speak, but he'll be in the money zone very shortly. Now I know what you're thinking, but where did Scott come up with the 12,000 for closing? Well, Scott's been in our program and made some money doing other deals. So he had the cash, but what if you're first starting? Where does that down payment money come from for you? As described in our video, four ways to get quick cash for good deals. Using personal short-term loans is a common approach to get the funding for down payments, closing costs, and other expenses not commonly covered by hard money. Borrowing from your 401k can be a fantastic way to do this because it's your money. And if you're gonna pay some interest to someone, it might as well be yourself. Lines of credit are also very helpful. These include a HELOC if you own a home, as well as a personal line of credit from a local bank. And although not for beginners, A pro tip on this subject are business lines of credit. After a year or two of successful house flipping, you can obtain a business line of credit from a local bank. 
In fact, most professional householders have established and grown their business lines of credit over the years and basically fund the majority of their business with it, as opposed to using their own savings. Credit cards can also be used for certain expenses, such as renovation materials on a Home Depot card. And you can typically pay for an inspection or an appraisal with a credit card as well. The key to these funding sources is to apply them to good deals that are short-term in length. Obviously, you can't afford to do a bad deal with personal short-term loans. But also, if you take on a long, complicated rehab project, you may end up 12 to 24 months down the road and you're still not finished. Then the interest eats up all the profits. You have to get in and get out quickly to make these work. The third common way that flips are funded is with private money, typically from friends or family. They may have savings or a line of credit or even a retirement account, and they want to get better returns on their money, which you can offer while being secured by real estate. Plus, if you're going to pay interest to a hard money lender, why not pay it to a friend or family member instead? Over the years, many of our apprentices have turned their network into hard money lenders, and it's been a win-win arrangement because the interest has been much higher for their friends and family than they could get most anywhere else. But be clear. The deals themselves were still really good deals and would have been approved by any hard money lender. It's just instead of paying some hedge fund that 12% in interest, they paid their uncle or their parents. And this may go without saying, but don't ever consider doing a bad or even marginal deal with a friend or family member's money. Be very cautious. It's one thing to lose a hedge fund's money. It's a whole different universe to lose Aunt Edna's savings. Also, and this is extremely important too, don't partner with a friend or family member. You want them to be a private money lender, not a partner in your deal that's telling you how to be an investor, especially when they themselves know nothing about real estate. Instead of giving them a percentage equity in the deal, they need to be paid interest as a lender. So that's how most house flips are funded. Hard money covers the majority of it, and then personal short-term loans handle the rest, or you turn your family or friends into hard money lenders. But what about the deals that aren't so good? that aren't like Scott's deal that he bought for 80 and it's worth 120 as is. And what if you don't have any access to personal short-term loans? You don't have any friends or family willing to fund your deals and the hard money lenders you're dealing with won't fund you without a big down payment. The best way to fund flips is to make the seller your lender or what is often referred to as creative financing. Now, as you've seen in previous videos, the best form of funding is no funding at all. And that's why we so often flip the properties we get under contract before we ever close. Some call it wholesaling or wholetailing, but it's essentially selling the property to another buyer before you have to close on the property yourself. Therefore, it eliminates the need for funding. This is how our founder, Phil, did his first deal when he was living out of his truck and homeless. And it's still today one of our favorite ways to make money flipping houses. There is very little risk and potentially huge rewards. But selling prior to closing is just the beginning of creative financing. We also do subject to seller financing or a combination of the two in order to make the seller our bank in a deal. And the genius of this is that it's short term in nature. It can be very difficult to convince a seller to let you take over the payments on their loan or to pay them back monthly over the course of many years. But when you keep it to less than six months, it's much easier to get a seller to say yes. Plus, the interest rates can be a fraction of the cost of hard money. And because of the lower funding costs, it allows you to do marginal deals sometimes and still make a decent profit. We have literally been a part of thousands of creative financing transactions, and there's just no better way to fund flips. For more details on creative financing, check out Phil's most watched video, How to Buy Real Estate Without Cash or Credit. It's a phenomenal education and timeless wisdom. Now, the main drawback to using creative financing to fund flips is that there isn't a way to borrow money from the seller to pay for renovations. So it works best either if you have access to some personal short-term loans or your own cash, or if the property itself doesn't need a lot of work. Maybe a couple minor repairs, a little in cosmetics and some quick make ready. Otherwise, if it's a major rehab, it's best to sell prior to closing anyways. Here's an example of a creative financing deal that created 75,000 in profits. Another one of our apprentices, also a Scott, but he's from the Northeast. Using our motivated seller marketing techniques, he negotiated a $290,000 purchase. He agreed to get the seller 5,000 at closing. That was gonna be in cash. He took over a mortgage at 271,000. 
that was going to be subject to, which left another 14,000 that he agreed to pay the seller back in a note within 24 months. He actually paid it within two months. Now this was Scott's 10th deal in our program. So he had developed his personal short-term loan options and was able to cover the 5,000 to the seller. And he also was able to cover about 1,500 in closing and holding costs. He also had to put about 12,000 into renovation. That 12,000 was about one third clean out and the rest of it went toward landscaping, a deck and patio, some flooring, a dehumidifier in the basement and a couple minor plumbing and electrical items. He had all that completed within a matter of a few weeks and after listing the property had a multiple offer and he locked in a buyer at 400,000. He agreed to get that buyer 5,000 as a credit at closing. Now, besides the 5,000 he was already out of pocket, the 1,500 in closing costs, and the 12,000 in rehab, he also had about 10,000 in commission, an additional 2,000 in attorney's fees, and also about 4,000 in taxes and insurance. After paying back the $271,000 loan, as well as the 14,000 he still owed the seller in the form of a note, he netted just over 75,500 in profits. So you can see how learning creative financing along with personal short-term loans can be an absolute game changer. But that's the other challenge for beginners, knowing how to do creative financing deals, from what to say to the seller, to the paperwork and everything in between. And it's yet another reason why people join our coaching program. We teach them everything we've learned about creative financing and turn them into money-making machines. So whether you're using hard money, personal short-term loans, private money, or creative financing, fund your first house flip. Learn to find and negotiate good deals. Finding the money gets a lot easier once you do. We've spent two decades mastering how to find, recognize, and fund good real estate deals consistently, especially with creative financing. It's allowed our apprentices to dominate their local markets as they grow into full-time real estate investors and totally transform their financial futures using these techniques. That's what we do at Freedom Mentor. We mentor and coach people into world-class house flipping professionals. If you want the very best in your corner, helping you every step of the way, consider applying to our apprentice program where myself, Phil, Devin, and the rest of our team will guide and train you through this incredibly profitable endeavor of flipping houses. And if you want to learn more about real estate and how to get started, you can get a free copy of Phil's book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, just for watching this. You'll learn about house flipping, funding, and how to leverage real estate to achieve your goals and enjoy the freedom that only real estate investing can provide. If you have any questions for us, text FREEDOM to 305-315-8030. And if you learned something new today or think I missed something or just want to know more about anything we've covered, comment below. I'm Brian Bush with FreedomMentor.com. If you gain more real estate wisdom in this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.